Welcome to Doron Yoga, everyone. Today we're going to shoot a class that's yoga for getting back into the practice. Whether you're recovering from an injury, whether you just were slacking for a little while, whether it's just one of those days where you woke up and you're like, I don't want to practice. Either way, it's a little slower, it's a little more gentle. It's really a good class to do. For those of you addicted to doing seven days yoga, take one day and do this class, okay? If anything we do is still a little too much for you, always take child's pose rest and then continue when you can. So here we go. We're going to start right away in delicious pose because I feel like that's the best pose to get us out of the mattress. So coming onto the hands and knees, remember to move slowly, to move with breath and with awareness. Beginning to move the hips in circles. Just start with the hips, move them up and down and around. If you can, begin to uh, start using your ujjayi breath, meaning the breath moves through the nose, slightly restricted throat, creating a soft sound. Switch directions. Beautiful. Come back to neutral. Let's do some cat-cows. So inhale, chest up, gaze up, drop the belly. Exhale, curl the belly, lift it in, curl the back, chin to the chest. Inhale, open up, shoulders back. Exhale, belly in. Inhale. Exhale. Now we're going to go to the full delicious, so come back to neutral. Same what we did with the hips. This time add shoulders, maybe bend the elbows, maybe even a bit the head and neck. Really become like water, become fluid. Switch directions. Good. Coming back to neutral. We're going to go into downward puppy, keeping the hips over the knees, walk the hands forward. And any time you're doing recovery yoga, you may find that some things are hurting or you'll feel like, oh my God, I used to do this. Yoga for recovery is also a training of the mind, becoming a Zen mind, practicing gratitude for the fact that you're just here, practicing, doing the best that you can. It can only get better. We're going to move into the downward facing dog, root down the hands, tuck the toes under, lift the knees, reach back, take a moment, bend one knee at a time. And when we're recovering, it's usually, oh my God, my hamstrings, my calves. But today it's like, oh my God, I have hamstrings, I have calves. <coughs> so much gratitude. Lower the knees back down. <coughs> Lift the right leg up. Stay here for a moment. Tuck the belly in. Keep the gaze slightly forward. <coughs> Optional. Try to take the left hand up. And then bring the knee in and the elbow in round the back like we were doing in the cat-cow. Inhale, open up. Exhale, round. Inhale. Two more. Reach. Hold for another three breaths. For those of you that feel like you can, maybe bend the back knee, reach the left hand to the right foot, and open up, stretch. Optional. I'll give a lot of optional. We all recover from different situations. And release. It's to the second side. Left leg up. Maybe if you can, right arm up. Exhale, bring it all in. Inhale, extend. Try to move slow. Exhale, with control. 
Exhale. 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 Last one. Beautiful. Hold a few more breaths. Again, stay here or reach back for the foot and open up. Release. Good. We're going to go back to downward dog one more time. I'm going to bring the right foot forward so you can lower the left knee down if you want and help yourself with the right hand if needed. We're going into low lunge. And you can keep the hands down here. This is a great place to stay. If it's available, bring the hands onto the knee. And use the hands on the knee to press a bit, to lift up in the belly and chest, to relax the shoulders. As long as you can feel your psoas, you can feel the front of the left thigh stretching, you're doing good. If it's too intense on the left knee on the ground, you can fold the mat under or put a blanket or a pillow, that's fine too. I find that sometimes lifting in the belly and lifting in the pelvic floor help remove a bit of the weight from the left knee. If all this is good, last few breaths, you can place the hands on the hips. I will intensify it dramatically, so I'm giving a lot of options, and please do what feels reasonable for you. Some of you are recovering after two weeks, some of you are recovering after six months, or just maybe a little cold of five days, who knows. Hands come back to the ground, we'll step it back to plank. Lower the knees down, let's all do this with the knees down. Lower chaturanga with the knees, just as far as feels reasonable for you, then lower to the belly and lift up. Let's take sphinx. We'll place the forearms down to the ground, pull the chest through, and just breathe here for a couple of breaths. And then lower down the belly, and then lift up the chest, lift up the hands. A mini half shalabhasana. Hands down by the ribs, by under the shoulders, and lift up a little bit. And this can be your upward dog every time today. If it feels better, you can lift up a little more. If it feels full upward dog, lift the knees, lift the thighs, lift the chest, right? And always listening to your body. Back to downward dog. And we're gonna bring the left foot between the hands, the right knee lowers down to the ground. Once more, hands can stay here. Maybe they're on the ground, and after a few breaths, it feels good to bring them up to the knee or to the hips. I usually recommend not to fidget, but I also recommend that if you do need to move, and you're moving because it got easier, then that's perfectly fine. Then you go deeper, and that's legit. Rediscover your breath. are heavy, heart is lifted, eyes are soft, lots of gratitude, you're back to practice. Hands come back down to the ground, stepping it back, I'm on my knees. We're going to try and do chaturanga on the knees, so bend the elbows, lower down as far as you can before it gets shaky, and then either baby cobra or upward dog, your choice, into the downward facing dog. Walk the feet to the front of the mat. Take the feet wide, maybe hip width or shoulder width. Bend the knees a lot, hold the elbows, hang out here. the hands, bend the knees, and like a wave, roll up to standing, head is last. Beautiful. We're going to just do a tiny bit of ankle knees, figure eight, and the other direction. 
tiny bit with the hips. And now we've already warmed them up. A little more can't hurt. Okay, we're gonna go for warm up two. So slowly, there's no jumping, but still do the best that you can. Feet together or a little apart. Inhale, arms up, gaze follows, gaze goes up. Exhale, forward fold. Totally fine to bend the knees. Inhale, look forward, keep the gaze forward. Exhale, step the right foot back. Keep the gaze forward, left foot back. Chaturanga, I'm gonna use the knees. Inhale, baby cobra, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Look forward, bring the right foot between the hands. Press strong into the left leg. Hang out here for a moment like a runner's lunge. And then if this is good for you, stay here if you can. Maybe even use the right hand on the right knee. Come up, lifting up to high lunge. If it's super unsteady, take the legs wider, meaning the right foot more to the right side. If it's easy, lower the hips down, lift the belly chest. <clears throat> looking down to the ground is easier than looking up, so see what's right for you today. Watch the hands as they come back to the ground. Step the left foot forward and exhale forward fold. Let the head release. Bend the knees, inhale, come all the way up. Look up, see your thumbs. Exhale slowly, samastitihi. Second side, inhale, arms up. Exhale forward fold, bend the knees a bit. Inhale, lengthen, look forward. Exhale, left foot back. Inhale, right foot back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, baby or upward. Exhale, downward. <coughs> left foot comes forward between the hands. Again, pressing the right leg, hanging out here for a moment. Look forward so you're lengthening the spine. And keep pressing into the right leg. If you need the hand again, use the hand on the knee, coming up. High lunge. Try to keep the hips as low as is reasonable for you. The belly tucks in, the pelvic floor lifts. Gaze either down or up. See if you can energize your arms. Relax the shoulders, but keep the arms energized. Watching the hands as they come back to the ground. Step the right foot forward and forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up, look up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Release the hands, arms by side the body. Take a breath here. Beautiful, everybody. So from here, we're gonna open the left foot back. We're going into a warrior two. So take as wide stance as you can. Again, as you warm up slowly, slowly, you'll be able to go deeper. Arms are up. And then feel like they're on water. And it's not a lot of effort. There's like energy supporting you from below. And then once you get that, there's a hose going from your shoulder to your fingertips and going, sending tons of energy but the shoulders are still relaxed. Try to open up your hips. Your right knee moves a bit to the right. Belly still tucking in. One more breath. Reach way forward, right palm up. Reverse the warrior. Get a nice little side stretch here. Back to the warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Shorten a bit the distance between your legs. Reach forward and take a triangle. Right hand anywhere on the right leg. Left arm to the sky. And over time, the right hand lowers down. As long as it's not at the expense of opening the chest, of opening the shoulder. Inhale, coming up. Beautiful. Let's switch direction so you can turn sides or you can step a foot forward and a foot back. So you can step it to the front. Relax everything for a moment and then step it to the back. 
And this time we have the left foot forward, warrior two. Again, opening the left knee to the side, feeling both the softness of the arms, like they're on nice gentle waters, and yet at the same time, there's energy coming out of the fingertips, which really helps you keeping that power while relaxing the shoulders. Reaching forward, left palm up, reversing the warrior. And back to the warrior two, straightening the front leg, shortening a tiny bit the distance if you like, it's not a must, and going back to Trikonasana, going into Trikonasana, triangle pose. So Ashtanga has the triangle a little shorter distance, Iyengar has it a little wider distance. Both are fine, a little bit different. You can always see what's appropriate for you on that specific day. Inhale, slowly coming up. Turn to parallel your feet. We're going into Prasarita. So outer edges of the feet parallel to the short edge of your mat. We're going to take the hands and we're going to clasp them behind the back. If it's a bit uh, tight, please use a strap. Dan's showing you how to do it. Take the strap, hold it with some space between the hands behind the back. As you inhale, belly tucks in, chest lifts, head lifts. As you exhale, slowly forward fold. If it's really like, oh my God, please bend the knees a bit. I'm starting with my knees bent. Who knows, maybe this is just because you were working out at the gym a lot, not because you were sick and you're just feeling a little tightness. All modifications accepted, doesn't matter the reason. If you need to modify, it's much better to modify than to not practice. Beautiful inhale, slowly coming all the way up. Release the strap if you have it, bring the hands to the hips. We'll do one more because it's so good for us. Inhale, elongate, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. This time bring the hands to the mat or to a block if they can't get it. And forward fold one more time. Lengthen the spine halfway. Bring the right hand a little more forward into the center. We're going to twist over to the left side. Left hand will come onto the sacrum, onto the lower back. Open up your left shoulder. <coughs> You're welcome to stay here. Some people like to wrap. Take the left hand towards the inner right thigh. Some people like to take the left arm up to the sky. Either option, whatever works for you, whatever feels reasonable for you today, is a good option. Always remembering to breathe. Left hand replaces the right hand. Right hand starts at the sacrum, opening the right shoulder, either staying there, maybe wrapping around and going to the inner thigh, maybe, maybe taking the right arm up to the sky. Find that somehow to be quite a bit more challenging. on with the breath. Both hands down to the ground. Okay. And then lengthen, tuck the belly and bend the knees a bit. Look forward, bring the hands to the hips. And as you inhale, come all the way up. Beautiful, everyone. Step it to the front, shake it away. Release. I'm going to go for a pyramid pose. So taking the hands behind the back, feel free to hold the elbows. If available, to take the reverse namaste, hallelujah. I'm going to step the right foot back and adjust the hips to face the front. Micro bend the left knee, or if you need to, you can even bend a lot in the left knee. That's fine. Inhale, creating length. Exhale, forward fold. And it doesn't really matter how far down you go. Just try to really elongate a bit in the spine. It will naturally curve at some point. If you feel behind the left leg some juga buga balaguga, it's probably a good sign. Doesn't matter if it's the hamstrings, maybe even the calves for some people. 
returning to breath. The mind is at the present moment, just breath. And start to elongate the spine, reach the head forward as you come up. Reach all the way up. If you can, try to step the right knee all the way forward. Keep it bent, hold for three, two, one. Or just release down. Let's do the other leg. Left leg goes back, left foot steps back. Hips adjust to the front. Belly lifts, chest lifts, gaze lifts. It's almost like you're scanning the entire room with your gaze as you come down to try and pull the spine long. And most of us pull it long only from the front. See if you can pull it long also from your sacrum, from your coccyx, your tailbone. Pull that back as you move the chest forward. Again, it's perfectly fine to keep the knee bent. It's perfectly okay to breathe. If it's starting to get easier on the arms, bring the palms a bit closer together. And if you're holding the elbows, they're actually moving away from each other. Inhale, slowly coming up. Focus the gaze, step the knee forward, three, two, one, release down, release the hands, let it all relax, the elbows move a bit in the wrists and the feet, okay. One of the things that I find that happens sometimes when we don't practice enough is the mind takes over and becomes a bit cuckoo. So this one I call Jingala Bluida in memory of my dad. And it starts with some shaking. So begin with shaking the knees, then maybe your shoulders, and then your hips. And then you can close your eyes or keep them open. Shake, 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 shake your head. And we're gonna do something really crazy. We're gonna go for a few moments of gibberish. So tell your friends and family that you're not gone loco. It's gonna end in 30 seconds. We're gonna scream and speak anything that you don't know the meaning to it. Three, two, one, and. Inhale. Just stand in samastiti. Try to feel grounding. Sense of peace takes over. Hear the breath. If your eyes are closed, softly open the eyes. Shift the weight onto the left leg, feel grounding. Vrikshasana, tree pose. We're going to bring the right foot. It can be just right on the ankle, on the calf, please not on the knee, or into the inner left thigh. Belly tucks in, hands maybe at the heart. If you need to, you can even do one hand on the wall. That's still very effective. For those of you feeling steady, maybe the arms up, completely optional. Hands back to the heart. Right knee forward, hold for a moment, and release with control. Side two, shifting weight onto the right foot. Left foot can be either on the ankle, calves, or inner thigh. Left knee open sideways, heart lifts, belly is in. Eyes are open, soft, steady gaze. Maybe hands up, maybe not. Belly hands to the heart, knee forward, release. Good job, everybody. We'll take an Utkatasana with feet apart. So feet are about hip width apart, bend the knees a lot. 
arms up. If it's too much, keep the arms like in cactus. If it's okay, straighten the arms, keep them apart. Lower the hips. Hold for a moment. Keep lowering. Keep lowering. Come down to a squat. Heels may be up, that's perfectly fine. Hands together, prayer position. Lift the chest. Boom, fall back, yippee. Take the feet, open the knees. Baddha Konasana, a little bit warm up for the hips. You may want to sit on a block, especially if you haven't done this for a little while. You feel like your back is rounding. Sitting on the block will give some love. You can check out, we'll have a knee modification class, but in general you can create some space between your calves and the thighs to have external rotation to protect the knees there. If there's room, begin to forward fold. And even if you're up here, I find that just pulling the chest, a bit like I would do in a sphinx pose, creates some length in my lower back, which is good for us. Right. And then as slowly I go down, maybe I'm there, maybe one day at the forearms. Maybe one day further down. Beautiful, slowly coming back up. Huh? We're going to make our way into plank. It could be plank with the knees down. I'll take my knees down. And we're going to slowly begin to lower to the belly. Slowly, 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 all the way down. Take a moment to rest, to adjust whatever you need to. Bring the arms forward. Cool. Right leg up. Left arm up. Breathing. If it's easy enough, try to straighten the right leg. Try to reach more with the left fingers. Release. Left leg up. Right arm up. Notice that we've turned the hand inward to create some space for the shoulder and shoulder blade. Shouldn't be any tension in the neck. Lifting up. The leg lifting up, the arm, the hand. Release. Move your hips a bit from side to side. Cool. Left elbow underneath left shoulder. Just a tiny bit of warm up for the quads, stretching them. Reach for the foot. And just a bit. The only thing here to note is don't take it sideways. I'll destroy your knee. Keep it alongside the body. At one, some point, when you can, the fingers will turn forward to face the same direction as the toes. It may not happen today. Being up here is fine. Nice, we'll take the other side. Not doing it very long holds, because I know sometimes when we just come back to the practice, everything hurts a bit, so. It's better to do some than nothing, and then slowly, slowly. We've got plenty other videos that give you longer holds, more advanced practices. And days where you don't feel like practicing, remember, oh yeah, I've got that lovely gentle one. And anything is better than nothing. Except for when you're in meditation, by the way. Release now. Okay. Let's try and do one full Shalabhasana. See if it works. Clasp the hands behind the back. Lift the chest. Lift the legs. Lift the arms. Just for three, two, 
run, release. Hips from side to side. Okay, you may need to repeat the Shalabhasana one more time. Maybe you can do bow pose if you can. Take the ankles, easier to take the feet for many people. And then lift up, just five smiles, four dolphins, three ginger beers, no alcohol, two breaths, one love and rest. Move your hips a bit from side to side. We'll throw in a little shoulder stretch again, not too long, just because they're so good. Take the right hand to the right side, about nose height. Begin to roll on to the right side, onto the right shoulder. Take about 10 breaths to each. I know it's really nothing. Again, just to start waking up the opening, breathing. If you feel something in your right arm, right shoulder, it's good. And let's go ahead and switch sides. Left arm. You can see that it's in the right spot, more or less shoulder height, and then turn. This gets more and more important the easier the practice is for you because when the arm is way too high or way too low, it takes away from the practice, from the intensity. So at first, if you feel it, it doesn't matter. But as it gets easier, it does. Gratitude to the shoulders, feeling of nice, sweet. Thank you, thank you for stretching here. Thank you for releasing. The more you release in your mind, in your eyes, the quicker your shoulders release, the softer you become. And sometimes soft is good. The balance of being able to be soft at the right moment and strong at another moment is crucial. Slowly back to center. Inhale, upward baby cobra. And exhale, press it back into a child's pose. Take the knees wide and rest. Okay, we're going to slowly come up. We're going to make our way to sit. You can just make your way to sit. You can go to downward dog and do little walks, hops to sit one way or another. Good. Got to recover our core as well too. So hold under the thighs, lift a bit in the chest, and maybe try to lift the feet off the ground. If this is too much, one foot at a time. If this is too easy, lift the knees to 90 degrees. That's shins. If this is easy enough, arms up in the air. If not, keep holding behind the legs. Relax. Imagine you're on a hammock like we do plenty here in Guatemala. Watching the view, relaxing. If you have no view and you've been here with us in the past, close your eyes for a quick second. Remember how beautiful it all is. And then reopen the eyes, feet down on the ground. Hug your legs, lengthen the spine, release. One more time, lift up. Again, feel free to hold behind the legs. Perfectly awesome. So in many classes, they show you options where you can either do them or you don't. And I believe that there's always a very, very basic form to reach the most advanced forms. And if you start with the basic, you have a chance to move to the medium. If you go to the medium, you'll get to the advanced. It's not black and white. Almost nothing is. Okay, lower down. Lengthen the spine. We're going to lower down to the back, so you can lower down slowly, maybe to the elbows, all the way down. Keep the knees up. And we're going to stretch the hips a bit more. 
So we're going to take the right ankle on top of the left thigh for thread the needle. Bring the left thigh closer to the belly. Thread the right arm through the legs, left hand from the outside. If you can, hold the hands over the shin. If that's too far, you can clasp over the thigh. And then slowly you can start to work on bringing the left thigh closer to the chest. You should feel behind the right hip to protect your knees, especially if there's some injury. Flex the feet. If no injury, you can stay as you are, and that's fine. Consider breathing. And really let the shoulders relax here. See if you can let the muscles around the eyes relax. of a smile is always useful to it sends the body messages that everything is okay everything is all right you guys are doing awesome we're going to switch to the second side the release and then left ankle on top of the right thigh just right under the knee Threading the left arm, right hand, right arm from the outside, either holding behind the thigh or onto the shin, maybe flexing the feet and working on bringing the thigh closer to the chest. As it starts to begin, as it starts to get easier, then you can work to be more diligent about keeping the tailbone, the lower back, on the ground. Because some of us round the back and deepen as if the practice it's okay i always say when we're beginners it's always fine to cheat some as long as it's not harmful to the body the more advanced the practitioner the more we become picky about the exact form both because the body can and because the mind hopefully is also further trained to be able to withstand the more details that come with more precise alignment. Returning to the Ujjayi breath. release. Bring both knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice little hug. I'm going to place the feet on the ground. <clears throat> Depending how wide your hips are. Mine are not super wide, so I took my feet even a bit wider than my hips, but hip width is good. Knees are slightly falling in towards each other. They're not touching, just a bit trying not to go wider than the feet. Lift the hips just a tiny bit, don't lift very high, and then feel the tailbone pulling towards the heels. Then go ahead and lift the chest a bit towards the chin. Try not to move the chin to the chest, but rather the chest towards the chin. <laughs> Maybe you're at half ability. Now roll the shoulders under. <clears throat> Clasp the hands underneath. And from here, you can keep lifting as high as feels reasonable for you. We've set up the stage to have a protected spine. Keep working the legs. Release the clasp of the hands and slowly <coughs> lower down. Move the knees from side to side as in windshield wipers. And let's repeat, please. 
If this was challenging, maybe move the feet a little further away from the hips. If it were easy, if it was easy, bring the heels closer to your hips. Again, lift halfway, or then move the tailbone towards the heels, chest up towards the chin, roll the shoulders under. You can hold the, clasp the hands or hold the ankles, whatever is good for you, and then keep lifting up, hold. If you can maintain the breath, I know many of us forget breathing when we go into back bends. Press a little more with the legs, lift, and then release the hands and slowly lower down. One more time, windshield wipers. Good, here we go, last one. Realign the feet if you move them. Part way up, tailbone tucks, chest towards the chin, clasp, lift up. If you want extra challenge, right leg up to the sky. Maybe not ready for it today, maybe yes. For three, two, one. Right foot down, left leg up. For three, two, one, left foot down. Release the hands, lower the hips down. Bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a hug. Ah, really a hug of love to your body. Some of us love our bodies and what they can do. Most of us remember the body when it's not functioning. We usually don't remember the belly until Something is wrong with it. We forget we have knees until they get injured. So now just send love all over the body. It's like a wave of pink or white or red or whatever you like. It can be light blue as well, that's okay. Send it and wash your body with your favorite color of love. Beautiful. Feet are on the ground. We're going to lift the hips and move the hips to the right side and then bring the knees up towards the belly and lower the knees over to the left. Open your right arm to the right side. Take your gaze over towards the right hand. You can place the left hand on the knees to help them come down to the ground. If it's super easy for you, you're welcome to wrap eagle legs. Right leg wraps over left or just stay as you are. Sometimes staying in an easier version than what you can do is beneficial for the mind. Sometimes it helps us be in a place where we feel completely relaxed. It's just a gentle happening in the body. And when we do this gentle happening from a place of deep surrender, of again finding the softness, we find subtle openings that otherwise are sometimes hard to find. I hope this feels so good that you can easily give yourself a smile in this pose. Slowly come back up. We're going to move the hips to the opposite side, the left in this case. The knees come up towards the chest and then they lower down. Then left arm will open to the side. You'll take the gaze towards the arm. Right hand can rest on the knees. Maybe you can focus on deepening the exhales.
slowly we're going to make our way back to center. Bring the, keep the left knee bending, left foot on the ground, bring the right knee up. And you can straighten the legs. One option, and maybe I'll ask Dan to demonstrate it, is to take the strap over the leg and just hold the strap. Another option, if you don't like the strap option, you just don't have one, you can have the hands behind the leg, anywhere, thighs or calves or shins. If you can reach your big toe with your peace sign finger or anything that really works for you, that's great. I highly recommend keeping the right knee slightly bent until it gets so easy. If you find that your right leg is close to straight and it's past 90 degrees, it's closer to your face than just over the hips, then feel free to straighten the left leg. Please do not do so if that's not the case. I'm going to keep my left knee bent today because I want to go easy. And then it's, like, it's nice to have a day where, especially for pita people that really like the challenge, it's nice to give ourselves sometimes permission to take it easy. Right? And for some of us, this is like, what easy? My hamstrings are dying. And that's okay too. Breathe through it. Smile through it. I'm gonna open your elbows a bit and bend the right knee. It's like a half happy baby. You're bringing the right knee a little bit down to the side of the body. A little bit towards the armpit, towards the side of the chest. Bring the leg back up and release the foot down. Got good news for you guys. Here we go. Left side, left leg. Then my right knee is bent. You can also trick it, right? You may not be equal between both sides, and that's very human. So again, the left knee is bent. Maybe right knee is bent if it's easy for you and the knee is coming, the leg is coming closer to your face. You can then straighten the right leg. Feel free to breathe. Many of us complain about human flaws such as stiffness, injuries, etc. It won't be long before humans will not be exactly humans as they are today. And I have a feeling that some of us, even though we'll have all the technology and the biotechnology to heal and fix certain things much easier, we'll also have abilities to hack our mind. And some of us will miss those days where we had to take an easy day class because we couldn't just pump a pill or some injection, but we actually had to do the work and stretch and open up slowly with breath and had to relax the mind because it was intense. There is something beautiful within the challenge, within the practice itself. Within putting in the effort, the time in order to achieve anything to master anything. Here we go. Knee goes down towards the armpit like a half happy baby. Maintaining the breath. So gentle. Beautiful. Release. Okay. Moving the knees again from side to side. Knees to the chest. We're going to roll back and forth and come up to sit. Take both legs forward. Bend the knees a bit. Or a lot. I'm going to start with a lot. Some of you will need to sit on a block. 
and forward fold. Kasha, would you be kind so to send me a block? Thank you. When I sit on a block, it helps mostly with my spine. When I bend the knees, it helps a bit more with the hamstrings. Relax my shoulders. It can be a little cushion. It doesn't have to be any fancy yoga block. So we're going to go for our last pose or two, and it's going to be an inversion. Um, <clears throat> if you have a wall nearby, you can just turn to the wall place the legs up the wall and relax there. I think that's a really nice option. I'm gonna stay here. In my case, I have a block. Um, so if you have a block or something to elevate a few books, you can do the trick. Put them under the lower back and then take the legs up to the sky. You can see I've given you the version of low block, like the block on its lower version. Dan has a thinner block, so he's even a bit lower. Kasha took the highest version of the block, which gets her closer to what a shoulder stand would be like. And so you can, again, try and see what feels best for you. Sometimes you need to move the block a bit under your spine to find where is the spot that feels best. Hands can be on the belly, chest, by the sides, relaxing. Really allow the exhales to deepen. You're still getting a bit of the throat shape of slight pressure on the thyroid area, which is good healing. You're getting a bit of the raising the legs. So the blood is, and the pressure is not always down on the legs, but giving them a moment's break. This pose alone is a miracle and it doesn't need any warm-up. Any time of day you feel like you're not grounded. <coughs> you just need a break, been running around too much. Just lay down, place the legs on the wall. Take 10 deep exhales. And really feel the head and the mind surrender. Feel them melt away, close your eyes. Like the whole universe is nothing but your breath. Your nice, slow, deep exhale. and place the feet down on the ground, remove the block and bring the knees now to the chest, roll a bit from side to side, loving, 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 feet together, knees to the side, Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined, we'll call it reclined goddess, down dangle. You can place the hands on the lower belly if it feels good. You can place them on the thighs if that feels better. Close your eyes. Scan your face. See if there's anything you can release in your face. Your eyes, your jaw. Your lips. your forehead, relax the shoulders, go ahead and straighten your legs, palms facing up alongside the body.
feel your hips heavy, completely relaxed. The legs and the feet soften, melt into the earth. And your whole body surrenders. You let go of any control which really gives the body an opportunity to heal. Maybe you can feel some energy move through the body, especially in the palms of the hands. Take a deeper breath. And as you inhale deeply, you feel energy coming in, filling up your body with life. Begin to move your fingers and toes. Take the arms overhead and stretch them. Feet together, stretch the toes, stretch the legs. Go ahead and bend the knees and roll over onto your right side. You can place your head on your hand, on your right arm or hands, whatever is good for you. Feel the calm, the safety, and the steadiness here. Use the left hand to help you rise. For a moment, come up to a comfortable seat. Right away, set the intention to come back to the practice tomorrow. Don't let this wait. The best kept secret to a successful practice is to show up, is to practice. Bring your hands together in front of the heart. Think of somebody that you love, that you care, care about, that you think, wow, if I send them this video, it would really be so good for them. Really keep them in your mind. And either right now you can open your eyes for a quick second, or later on, go ahead and remember, forward it to maybe three people that can really benefit from starting to do yoga, from getting back onto the mat. It is such a gift for all of us. Thank you all so much for your practice, for being with us today. Subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. And see you soon. Namaste.